Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. Now that I'm a tank power set, I can properly have this discussion. It's something that uh, I didn't think I needed to talk about at all or bring up at all. But uh, it's been more of a magnified issue this DLC specifically, just for the, uh, especially, especially Crown of the Thorns and somewhat Throne as well. But uh, it's come up in terms of tanks taking... Uh, an issue with kiting where they're saying it's cheesy or exploiting or glitching you know i pretty much heard uh from a bunch of different tanks here and that where it's it doesn't make any sense to me but uh let, let's have this discussion here so basically before i go into the actual video footage here i wanted to uh, introduce what is kiting what do i mean by that uh so in terms of tanking there's four types of tanking uh, not so much tanking methods or, or tanking mechanics, um, tanking ideologies, whatever. There's, there's four ways to tank. You've got um, face tanking, which is basically, you know, you're always in the ad's face. You're in a big dog pile. Perfect example of this is like throwing to the dead. You're just surrounded by, you know, 16, 20 ads. You can't go anywhere. You just, you know, you got to survive. Uh, second way is you've got counter tanking. Uh, this one plays more to ice. So especially like ice and survival mode, you've got shields. Uh, you have to counter the boss or counter the NPC to have immunity to, sur to survive. Uh, that's what you did because it's harder for other tank power systems to, to counter where rage was, they were in their combos. They can, but to some degree, but you know, they're canceling the rage crash. That's what they're focusing on. Uh, they can still counter, but mainly they're trying to buff their health, keep their combo meter up, stuff like that. Uh, atomic was much harder to counter with because you're always in your combos. Same thing with earth. You're always doing aftershocks. So you're not countering as much. Uh, fire in the past was always blocking, so they weren't really countering because um, they were more of the third method, which is turtle tanking. Turtle tanking, you don't really have too much in the game now with the new fortified assault neck meta, but uh, turtle tanking was very prevalent uh, before in the past, especially with fire and survival mode. And fire was the you know the perfect exemplar of a, a turtle tanking power set, where you just you know all you're doing is holding block. Popping shields, popping healing, and you're basically you're just being you know a big sponge for damage, just holding block, having aggro. Now the fourth method was kiting. Um, what kiting is is essentially you're keeping uh, yourself at range, or you're, you're keeping moving. So say I've got a bunch of ads here, I'll pull them, you know, stun them with a chrono, you know, and then I'll get to the other side here. Ads are gonna follow me, whatever. Pull them again, you know, stun them, get to the other side. You're constantly on the move. You're constantly pulling the ads with you each time. So you're seeing them and then you know moving back. That's essentially what kiting is. Uh, say like uh, Pano Elite, you had uh, Owlman on second boss. Uh, of course, you could face tank him. You could stay right with him. But you know if you didn't want to get your spin punched or whatever, uh, his beam, you know you just walk back and forth. Aggro him. He'd follow you. Okay, just walk over here. You know, shield, whatever you got to do. He attacks you. Okay, walk back over here. Same thing with um, Ultraman and the final boss. You know, you wouldn't chase him and lunge him and, you know, be in his face the entire time. You'd be ranged so that he would lunge you, do the stomp smash. You could block it, get your immunity, you know, walk a little farther, whatever, pull him again, have him lunge you, block it out. You know, that that's essentially what kiting is. Um, now, there's three methods, or there's not, there's three easy ways to do it. I'm Acrobat, so with Acrobats, you have the foot mod, which is Tumbling Master, so your dodge roll is no longer vulnerable to interrupt. You may also tap the moving controls to cancel out your dodge roll and do a combo. So before, like if, you, if you're if you super speed or flight or, or skimming or whatever, if you roll, you could get lunged by an ad, so you don't necessarily want that. But with uh, Acrobats, you know, I can keep dodging. I can keep Tumbling Mastering away, pull the ads, stun them, Tumble Master away, whatever I need to do. That's just uh, essentially much easier as acrobats. Now, th these two other methods, you may have seen one more frequently, but this one, the Bolt Sport Drink, which grants super speed for five minutes. Uh, that's, you see, much more common for tanks running this in Crown of the Thorns because of the flight, because flight is the worst tank power set for kiting. Flight movement just is not good with it. Uh, you move very slow in combat. So by drinking the soda, now I'm acrobats, now I'm super speed. So you get super speed. You got the double jump, so basically pull some ads, stun them, you know, double jump away. They break out of the Sunni, you pull them over here, whatever, stun them again, you know, double jump away, 
you know, you, you're very quick in movement with super speed. That's the advantage of that movement mode. It's the fastest in combat speed. Now, the third way is, is man bat. You see a few man bat tranks uh, just because, you know, your bigger body, you know, if you got the boss or whatever, you can block out the boss, kind of keep them trapped. Uh, you're just a bigger form. You'd also see tanks in the past using like that, uh, whatever, the clown trinket, whatever, to make yourself a bigger mass to help you block in um, ads better or block in bosses better. That, that's essentially what Manbat is for. But the other advantage of Manbat, since Magbat is acrobatics, Manbat's dodge roll is the largest dodge roll out of any form trinket. So you can see the distance that I can cover just with one roll compared to what I could without Manbat form. So if I, whatever, stun the ads, chrono them, I can cover so much distance. Look, how I covered almost that entire distance just with one roll. So it was one square away from being this entire chessboard distance away. Stun the ads, stun them, whatever, boom. So I'm one square away. I covered what? One, two, three, four, four squares I covered just with one roll. And if I want to do two rolls, if I start from here, so that's one, two, almost two rolls. I can get the entire length of this room in two rolls. So that, that's the main advantage you see of man bats uh, when they're tanking is that you have such, and with obviously Tumble Master, you're not vulnerable. So you've got such a great uh, distance to cover with that roll. It's much easier to kite with, but that's essentially what kiting is. So let's get into the footage here and, and kind of have a better discussion about it. Okay, so this is Crown of Thorns Elite. Uh, this is the raid that everyone's having the issue with in terms of how it's being played by tanks and in terms of kiting uh, and considering it an exploit or a glitch or cheesing. Now, I covered what uh, the basically what kiting is in uh, my previous conversation there, and I showed some examples of uh, how you would use it. So right now I'm not using the sport drink. I'm not using the manbat form. I'm just using regular acrobats. So essentially what kiting does is you're, all you're basically doing is influencing the AI of the NPCs. And what I mean by that is normally an NPC... Um, when he's right beside you, he's going to start to do his build-up attack. Either he's going to do, uh, you know, spinning punch or big scoop or, you know, uh, two-handed, one-handed spin shop, whatever, flip slash. Whatever the ad's five attack or five hit combo is, that's the ad's going to start to do that if he's close to you. If the ad's not close to you, the AI is going to say, okay, I need to get in range of the player or whoever the aggro target is. Uh, in this case, it's me because I'm aggroing them. I need to get close to that that player or that target so I can start to use my you know big damage attack or big damage combo. What you're doing by kiting is basically just influencing the AI. So basically by staying at range, you're making the AI lunge you to get in to get in range. So the AI is not gonna do, you know, he's not gonna do a spinning punch when you're fifty feet away. He's he's not gonna do that. He's gonna lunge in, then start to do that. So by kiting you're making the ads always lunge you. So lunge you, whatever, you get a counter, you know, you have immunity, you stun them, you go back to the other side, and block them. So essentially, you're minimizing completely the risk of damage because you're influencing what the AI is doing. You know he's always going to lunge and chase after you, so, you know, you, you kite, basically. You move up and down the sides. Now, in previous raids... Uh, it all depends on the raid where you would do this or the, or the situation called for. So if I, basically, if I face tank these ads and, and stood right in the middle, you know, just let them all beat up on me. So you've got, what, six or seven different ads doing their build-up attacks. When either their, even their lunges hit me for like 10, 15, 20K. So basically, I'm going to be seeing like 30, 40K combos. I'm supposed to just eat them through my shield and through my rage mechanic. Why would I put that type of pressure on the healers and that type of pressure on myself to min mitigate that damage? When I can just you know walk up and down, I can jump over them, whatever, and just keep kiting. So you can see I'm not really at risk of, of dying in here. I'm not, you know, my health isn't dipping. You know, I think there's a few times where I might get stunned by Aqualancer when I'm about to crash uh, or need to cancel. But essentially, I am at no risk of dying from the ads unless I get trapped. So unless I, I go to cancel and then I just you know get trapped by four or five of them and then I can't move. And then basically I, I just start eating damage as like a damage sponge. That's really my only chance of dying in this method. And 
I guess that's why tanks and players take such offense to it is that it's so easy that you know you can't die and and that's just because of the the raid scenario so i i talked about throwing the dead throwing the dead was a similar raid where it's like you know bosses you had to separate them you needed two tanks because one tank couldn't do everything and then you've got a large room but the thing is the way like uh throwing the dead you would have had tanks kite you would have tanks kite. but the problem was is that you had the essence now, if any ad hit the essence, he healed back to full, and you couldn't drop Ares' shield if, unless the essence was dead. So you couldn't let any ads get near the essence. So that's why you had to you had to stay in one spot. You you couldn't kite because there was nowhere to go. You couldn't let the ads get close to the essence. So you had to basically just face tank and eat it. And that's why so many tanks had issues with that. Besides, say rage, just because rage back then rage's health was buffed on how many targets were near you. So you had more ads, your health got buffed. So. That's why Rage Tanks did so well, and all the other tanks like Ice and everything struggled because they just couldn't mitigate that much damage from that many ads being up close. And you'll see even times here where I let the ads stay near me, they start to do their build-up attack, I start to eat damage, and uh, you know I put myself at a greater risk. So, kiting has been around forever. <laughs> kiting it's it's not like we invented kiting with this raid or kiting's just coming out of the blue kiting has been around since the very beginning of this game it just depended on the actual situation if the tank needed it you know it's going back to survival mode i, I don't know if these tanks that have an issue with kiting didn't play survival mode i guess they didn't because i or they just sucked at tanking in survival mode because kiting was all over the place in survival mode because uh the perfect example of this is is crypto in the FOSS sm you couldn't face tank crypto. If crypto caught you, you're dead. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. You are dead. And no one can res you because crypto will kill anyone that gets near you. The only way a tank could survive, an ice tank specifically on crypto, was to basically just go into hibernation and ice block himself while the second tank led crypto away so that when he broke out of hibernation, he wouldn't just get instantly killed again by crypto. That's the epitome of, of, of kiting. You could not let crypto touch you or you dead. You were dead. And no one could res you. It basically, it was a run wipe. If crypto caught you, you died. You know, sayonara. So you're kiting the entire time. Uh, another example of this is there's a whole bunch of these examples of like this in OA. Uh, the OA survival mode. So it's basically you, when you couldn't survive the damage of the boss and you're basically kiting from range or you're staying at range, so basically the, the boss doesn't like do combos on you. You know, Atrocitus was similar to like that as well where you're kind of kiting. You, you didn't want to face tank his, uh, his stomp smash. You could as fire, but uh, you didn't intentionally want to just stay still and face tank and block through his... Uh, his um, I forget that what the attack was, but basically it's when he was knocking you up in the air and kind of juggle you. He'd do like his face slam or whatever. Uh, you, you got out of there. If you started to do that attack, you rolled away. You just waited until you finished it and then moved on. That's what kiting was. You're kiting that attack. You're kiting that skull. Because if you stood there and face tanked the damage, you were taking massive damage that you, you didn't need to take. Why would I sit there in that entire group of, what is, what's that, like eight or nine drift soldiers all hitting me for like 20, 30, 40 Ks? Why would I sit right in the middle of that and take all that damage? What's the point? Why stress the healer? Why stress myself? Why stress the healing? Why risk dying so that the group wipes? It's totally unnecessary. Kiting is a perfectly legitimate strategy for tanking. There's no... No one can argue otherwise. It's just that this raid just like it magnified um, the usefulness of kiting. Because this room is so large... You have to, you can't really be swimming. You've got to change to like either the sport drink or man bat or, or be acrobatics. Uh, you couldn't, you couldn't risk swimming with it just because it didn't work or, or like have that tumble mass ability, ability, sorry. It's just, that's all this raid was, is, is it just exemplified how much you need kiting just to be able to, you know, make it not, you're just making it easier on yourself. That's all you're doing as a tank. You're, you're surviving and making making sure the ads the, the, all the aggro's on you and you're surviving. So how do you survive? Not by face tanking. But so what's the point of it? You survive by kiting, keeping the ads at range, influencing the AI so that the AI is always lunging you. He's out they're always chasing you so they aren't doing their large attacks. 
that's what you do. That's what you do to survive. You know, it's it's the same. You know, it's infinitely easier. You could do be dash attack too, and and uh, at least you have a shield, and you can always run away with dash attack. You can do that as well. Uh, I'm just if you're super speed. So super speed just has a much easier way of kiting as opposed to specifically flight skimming. Acrobats is okay, but you know super speed just has it uh, even easier. But that's all it is. So I don't understand where all the tanks in the community have an issue with kiting all of a sudden when you know 100 percent you could not there, there's content out there where you're always kited even you know it may not have been in a huge area like this like say dark side war factory you didn't just sit in the middle and just take all the damage you kited the ads in a small circle you kited them on the outside you know you kept uh, going around the outside and stunning them you didn't just sit there in the middle and just eat damage it's just that the kiting examples here are a bit more exaggerated because of the distance the room is so large the area you can cover like, I, I don't need to kite this whole area. I could still do it in, like, a little circle. You know, you just got to keep enough distance where the ad, you influence the AI's actions enough to lunge you so they don't build up their attacks. And then they just lunge you, whatever. If you want to have immunity, if you want to stun them, then, you know, you just basically, I know the ads are always going to keep lunging me. They're not going to do anything else because of the distance I'm away from them. That, that's all it is. Kiting is just influencing actions and making it a bit predictable. That's it. So... Uh, it's certainly not a video that I thought I would have to make, uh, but there's been enough pushback about kiting or saying it's cheesy or glitching or stuff that uh, I just needed to cover it. Uh, and this was a perfect example of kiting. And hopefully with this explanation and basically what actually kiting is, you can kind of better understand it, but it's not cheesy. It's, it's not glitching. It's not exploiting. A kiting is just, it's kiting. You know, that's, it's, a basically a legitimate strategy just the same thing as like the pillar tanking i mean not on top of pillar tanking i mean using the environment tactically so um you know body blocking whatever same same thing if dark side war factory if you didn't want um a stompa to get out you body block stompa between two tanks or or um your sidekick or the npc you're going to say body blocking is cheesing just so the stompa doesn't jump out? No, you're influencing stompa's actions by body blocking so she can't get out and you have an easier time to DPS. That's that's all the thing. Body blocking is the same thing as kiting, just a different uh, it's just a different application, just a different application of tanking. So I don't understand where the tanks are coming from in this community that have an issue with kiting, uh, but you know, here it is. Take care, guys.